the crowd sits on the edge of their seats, waiting in anticipation for the beginning of the race. The anxious team members fix their eyes on the track, hoping that all their hard work will result in victory. There's a blast of smoke, and the cars are off. But these are no ordinary cars. They are miniature CO2 powered racing cars, and they are part of a competition called Formula One in Schools. Formula One in Schools is an international competition with over 9 million participants spanning over 30 countries worldwide. The nonprofit organization was founded by Andrew Denford in England back in 1999. And since its beginning, the program has expanded to every continent. F1 in Schools began primarily as a design competition, but since its start, the project has evolved to encompass much more. Students must work together to form a team and then design a 120th scale Formula One car, the best of which can reach up to 50 miles per hour. There are five main components to Formula One in schools. Design, analyze, make, test, and race. What's interesting about the F1 program particularly for middle school, is that the, the process the kids go through in engineering their, their car and testing is that many of those the same steps that they use during this process are the scientific steps. So I think it drives home just those steps. Participation in F1 in schools is very easy. You can access information on how to join from the F1 in schools website at www. .f1inschools.com From there, you register with the Technology Student Association, who is one of F1 in Schools' partners. Getting involved with F1 costs $150. This provides the school with software and the necessary equipment to begin making a Formula One car. Teams consist of three to six members, although the average team has five. Uh, I like the team effort that is involved. You have many different personalities that come together and have to work together as a group to put together one complete project. Each team requires a team manager, resource manager, manufacturing engineer, graphic designer, production manager, and design manager. But some team members can perform more than one job. Um, my job in F1 was I was our team manager, so basically I was responsible. I was responsible for keeping everybody on task and getting ready for the competition. Uh, we come up with ideas for the car, what would make it more aerodynamic. Take ideas from other people on our team and like actually make the car on the computer, design it on with using the CAD. The competition may sound like it's directed towards boys, but in fact, one third of the participants are female and the girls can do more than their fair share of work. Just ask Team Pinks, an all-girl team from Pennsylvania. We all get so psyched about trying to outwin the guys or outrace them when they think it's just a guy thing. And we're like, no, we're girls who can do anything that they can. Teams create a tabletop display in order to market their car and their design. The displays are required to be 3 feet by 4 feet by 18 inches. The displays allow a group to create their team identity and present the marketing for their car. Teams are also interviewed by a panel of judges. They are asked about their design process the biggest challenges overcome during the process, and other questions about their cars and team. A well-prepared, eloquent interview can help add points to a team's score. 
They need to give an informative presentation. Uh, they need to explain some aspects of the design process. They need to tell us their initial ideas and how they develop that. And we'd like to see them um, also talk with some visual aids. Those are always nice to have some visual aids, either a laptop, their presentation board, portfolio, the actual car. Teams start the manufacturing process by using a 3D modeling software to design their F1 car. Then the design is tested with a computational fluid dynamics program which tests the fluid dynamics of the car in a virtual wind tunnel. After a team is satisfied with the design, a CNC router is used to machine the car. Once the car is machined, team members sand, paint, and add decals to the car. They also mount the wheels and axles. Last, the cars are tested in smoke and wind tunnels to ensure that the car is fluidly dynamic. Finally, the car is ready to race. After the cars have been built and the displays created, it's time for the most exciting part of F1 in School's competition, racing. Let's go racing. Uh, when it comes down to it, I'd probably have to say my favorite part is, is the competitions, just racing them. Uh, you test them, you test them, you get good times, and you think, you know, if I only can get this during the competition, that'd be amazing. And you go there and you're your heart is pumping like crazy whenever you're at the competitions, and when you see your car race and, and succeed, it, you know, what ours has, it's, it's amazing. The racing portion is broken up into two sections, computer fired and reaction time. The computer fired portion strictly tests the engineering of the car, while the reaction time portion involves a team member's quick reflexes. The cars receive their initial burst of energy when a mini CO2 cartridge in the back of the car is punctured. However, the CO2 lasts only about two tenths of a second, and the rest of the time, the car is just coasting. But that doesn't stop these little cars from moving surprisingly fast. Good cars take just over a second to travel down the 80-foot track. Formula One in schools has evolved into a worldwide competition. Schools compete to win at the state and national levels before achieving the ultimate goal, making it to the international competition. I've been to nationals three times and I've been to the world championships twice. I've been to Dallas, Nashville, Orlando, and Melbourne, Australia, and Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. This is truly a life-changing experience for the students that are involved to be able to go around the world, be involved with students from multiple countries, multiple cultures, and multiple ideas, all for one single goal, and that is to race Formula One in school. 30 countries, nine million students, one experience of a lifetime. Where could affluent schools take you?